Hey guys, even here, and the New York Pro has started, this is the pre-judging right here, and I gotta say, I am really impressed, what an amazing show, all of these guys really brought it, and this is your top 6, that's right, top 6, where is Quinton Araya? Not in the top 6, he's battling for 7th, I don't even know if he's gonna be 7 this year, so we're gonna talk about Quinton a little bit later. Now let's check out these guys right here, right in the center, Martin Fitzwater and Nick Walker, and I think that's your top 2, like I said, I did not see Tonio beating Martin at this show, and I don't see it now that I'm watching the show, I think Nick Walker is winning this. But Martin is actually pretty close, surprisingly close. I think he got the angle on Nick, and you don't see the size difference really, but you can still see the details in certain shots that only Nick has here. On the sides we also have Angel Calderon and Beef Stew, and I thought Beef Stew was gonna be battling against Tonio. I didn't know if Angel is gonna be in there or Quinton Araya, but Angel got in and he looks amazing, and also there is uh, Christian Wolski in that top six. Can something change? Can Quinton somehow squeak into this top six? I don't see it happening, honestly. We're gonna talk about Quinton again later. Now, Nick Walker absolutely brought it. I'm gonna show you his posing routine as well. He did not let that stomach go in any moment. He had it perfectly under control. His conditioning is so much better than Pittsburgh Pro. It's the best conditioning in his show, I would say. Especially with the lines in the hamsters and the glutes and also the lower back, like, he's the most conditioned guy here. The other guys are also in great shape, but head to toe in every single body part. Overall, Nick is simply the most conditioned guy. I would say his posing is also the best. He's so composed, so slow in the transitions, but also fast. He's not late with the poses. He's just doing it perfectly, basically. This is just a perfection. I mean, this is exactly how a professional bodybuilder should conduct themselves on stage. Nick is doing a perfect job. Now, still, you can see that his waist is not exactly the smallest, but... Does it really matter? Because when he flexes the abs, you pay attention to his abs, how crazy thick and developed they are, you don't really pay too much attention to his waist. So I don't think his midsection is gonna hurt him, not too much. Also his legs, yeah, they might not be the most sweepy legs ever, but they have detail. And in the side shots, he is killing everybody. Martin also looks really amazing in the side shots, he has crazy fullness in the chest. Antonio also looks surprisingly good in the side shots. Now, again, from behind, nobody has details in the hamstrings, nor the thickness, the muscle thickness of the hamstrings, like Nick Walker, and his back is the widest, the biggest, uh, Tonio's back is great, but I think Martin's is better, because it's just more, like, it's wider, it's thicker, Tonio has better details, though, in the back, last spread, Martin doesn't look that great, not as good as Tonio, I would say, but the other shots, I think Martin's got him, you're gonna see other callouts in a moment as well, uh, now again, side shots, here is a moment where Nick could have lost the control of his midsection, but he didn't, he actually kept it pretty nice and tight, so yeah, I'm pretty sure Nick's got this show, he's winning this hands down, and also I have Martin second, Tonio third, Beef Stew fourth, look at the vacuum of Beef Stew, he did a vacuum, a really good vacuum, and he has the size to go against these guys, he's just not as conditioned, that's the thing, which is something he can easily improve in the upcoming shows, and I think he's gonna qualify for the Mr. Olympia, unlike some other more popular bodybuilders who would like to be there, but I don't think they're gonna make it, and you know exactly who I'm talking about, Quinton Araya, once again, most likely somewhere around 7th, I would say, I don't think he's gonna be 6th, I think 7th or 8th, they're gonna do another callout after this one with uh, two guys from the first callout and Quint and Tim, Tim Budesheim, so we're gonna see if Quinton has any chance of climbing up a little bit more, but I think when he figured out he's not in the first callout, he was probably super disappointed because he wanted to win this show, not to be top 3, not to be top 5 even, let alone 7th or 8th, I mean, I didn't see this, but I honestly didn't know what to expect from him, I thought top 5 is reasonable, because last year, actually 2022, he was in some, you know, top callouts, and I saw those updates from a couple of days ago, and he looked significantly smaller than I thought he would be on stage, and I would say also compared to his previous year, actually 2022, I mean, I'll say it right now, he actually looked better in 2022, I think this is the first time in a long time that I saw Matt Jensen failing with somebody this bad. So his conditioning was probably better than that year, but he lost all of the gains he gained in the, in the offseason. 
I don't know what went wrong, but he didn't gain any muscle. He looked smaller than in 2022. Conditioning was a little bit better, but not that much. And against these guys, against these monsters, he needs to be a lot, a lot bigger. So here's the actual second call out. So Angel Calderon dropped down and Christian Wolski, but I think these guys are in that top six. Clinton here had a chance to fight, to maybe climb up into the top six, but I don't think he showed any fight. I don't think he tried really hard. His posing was not convincing, and also, like, with his size, I don't see him beating a monster like Angel Calderon. Yeah, he's a lot shorter, but look at the back. Look at the glutes. Look at the hamstrings. Look at the legs. Same thing about Dwolski, he is also really big, he probably is beating Angel, I'm not sure, but it's a battle between these two guys. And Tim Boreshaim is the biggest guy right here. But he's blocky, he doesn't have the best line, so I think maybe Quinton can beat him. But not likely, not likely. Honestly, I have Quinton last in this callout. He honestly looks more like a classic bodybuilder than like an open guy. All these guys are much, much bigger. Yeah, his structure is beautiful. But there is no size, and this is open bodybuilding. You might say you like his physique the most, that's okay if you like classic physiques, but this is not bodybuilding, this is not open. He needs to add a lot more muscle if he wants to be actually competitive in the top open shows. Do I see him maybe winning some of the smaller shows? I, I honestly don't. I mean, it's gonna be very difficult. There's gonna be a guy who has much worse structure than him, but better conditioning and just more size, and... It will probably do it. I mean, small waist, beautiful aesthetics and so on, that's great, but it's great in classic. In open bodybuilding, it's not that important. Size plays a big, big role. And I'm not saying he didn't try hard to put on muscle. He tried, man, like nobody else. I really don't think any of these guys at the New York Pro tried harder this past offseason. He had a long offseason, almost two years off of stage. And I watched him on podcasts and I follow him on Instagram. He was force feeding like crazy. He had to eat so much food. And he was enormous. He was big in the offseason. I thought the improvements will be there, but no, no. Honestly, again, he looks worse than in 2022. Maybe, maybe there is a possibility that Matt Jensen somehow messed him up. He didn't know his body, he didn't know what to expect. Maybe he depleted him too much and he just lost the fullness and he couldn't get it back. That happens. That happens often with bodybuilders. There comes a point when you're super lean and if you don't start feeding yourself again, you just keep burning through everything like a furnace. Like you burn all the muscle. And I think that might have happened to Quinton. Uh, Matt didn't want him on stage without good condition. And for this conditioning, he lost too much fullness and it didn't look good. And obviously, he will not place well. Not at all. Now, we got another first call out, only four guys, and for some reason, Tonio and Martin were in the center of the call out. Does that mean they're fighting for first and Nick is in third? No, no, absolutely not. The judges are trying to decide who is second here. So they put these two guys in the center to compare them nice and well, and let's take a look. I mean, honestly, I have Martin winning this. Winning this comparison, I mean, if you told me that Tonio is winning it, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I think these guys are very, very close. Personally, I just have Martin, because he's bigger, he's fuller, he's rounder, and he is kind of compared better to Nick Walker. Tonio is awesome, but, like, he's not that much more conditioned than Martin. Maybe a tiny little bit, maybe not at all, but, like, lower body from behind. Here is the difference. Hamstrings. You can compare Nick's and Martin's hamstrings. You can't compare Martin's to Tonio's. No, no, no. Beef stew is great, but I think conditioning is just a little bit behind. Take a look at Nick Walker in the back lat spread. He never looked this good, this freaky, this white. This is crazy here. And again, Nick's abdominal control was amazing at this show. This is exactly what I was looking for to see if he messed it up, but no, no, he was... Keeping it tucked in the entire show, it looked amazing, so props to Nick for that, and again, with this conditioning, with his dryness, his wheat taper looked so much better than at Pittsburgh Pro. It didn't look problematic at all. Yeah, the other guys had great midsection, super small waist, but it wasn't a problem for Nick. I mean, with his developed midsection, he actually looked phenomenal here. Look at his most muscular. And these guys can't stand next to him. I mean, he's a top 3 Olympian, the other guys are not, let's be honest. They are top 10, sure, but top 3, no. However, I was surprised how close Martin was to Nick. 
I thought Martin was gonna be blown away by Nick, but no, no, he actually held his own. Especially in that first, first callout. Here, Nick, I think, stepped a little bit more forward. So here you can see the actual size difference. You couldn't see it that much in the first, first callout. And I would say Martin faded as the show went on. I think he got a little bit more watery. So we'll see about the finals. Maybe he spills over, maybe he's too full. And that's why he looks so comparable to Nick. And maybe by the time finals come, he spills over completely and... Tonio beats him, I think it's very close between him and Tonio, so Martin needs to nail it tonight, if he doesn't do that, I don't know if he can play second here, and Nick, yeah, he's firmly in that first, and Beef Stew is very firmly in that fourth, Clinton, in my opinion, seventh or eighth, I don't see him sixth, but you guys tell me down below, what do you think, who do you have winning, who do you have between Martin and Tonio, and what do you think where Quinton is gonna place in this show? If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And for the video about the finals, subscribe to this channel. Stay here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.